Hi, welcome to the What Circuit blog. My name is Sajad. This is the first video in a series of tutorials about LED lighting drivers. We have a problem. When we want to do precision work on the bench, there isn't enough light around. Now, you can see above there's a couple of fluorescent tube lights, but the shelves here create quite a few shadows. It's even when I'm working, if I turn around and I'm like this, the, because the tube light's right above me, it creates quite a shadow. So there's a few, we thought we'd solve this by putting lighting over here under the shelf. We looked at a few options. The first one was mounting fluorescent tube lights under the shelves over here. Now they have a few advantages. They're cheap to buy and they're cheap to run. They have a few disadvantages. Firstly, you're gonna be running 240 volts very close to your workbench. They have a problem with EMI. So if you're working on a project, you might get interference because of the high voltage running across. And the third one is that if you break one of the fluorescent tube lights, you're going to release mercury into the air. So you're going to have to leave and then clean up and dispose of the bulb in the correct way. Another option we looked at was using a desk lamp. This one uses a compact fluorescent tube light. So it has the same advantages and disadvantages as mounting a tube light underneath the shelf. An advantage it has is that it's movable so you can move it to wherever you want. The disadvantage of that is it can get in the way sometimes. The final option we looked at was using LED lights. Now they're small so they don't get in the way much. They use low voltage and they give out good light. The current light levels on the bench is about 700 lux. Now when we start working on it and you bend over it goes down to about 400 lux. It gets difficult to see sometimes at that level. Now, with the desk lamp, if I turn it on, by the time it warms up, you get something about 1,500 lux. But when we use LEDs, now the ones I'm going to turn on right now, it's just a prototype using two LEDs. The final one should have four. The levels go up to about 2,200 lux. They also give consistent and even light across the workbench. I've set up an LED to see the IV characteristic. On the x-axis you can see the voltage and on the y-axis you can see the current. You can see that a small change in the voltage gives a large change in the current. The current affects the brightness of the LED. Let's see how we can work with this. Now I've added a resistor you can see that the gradient of the slope has decreased. So as the voltage changes the change in current is less dramatic. This gives a more constant output of light on the LED. This is good for low power applications, but you'd end up wasting a lot of energy for high powered applications. As we can't use a resistor for high powered applications, let's look at a linear regulator. A linear regulator maintains the output current no matter what the input voltage is. This means it's acting like a variable resistor. The maximum efficiency in a linear regulator is when V in is equal to V out. This means that the regulator is acting like a zero ohm resistor. As you increase the input voltage, the resistance increases. This creates a buildup of heat and reduces efficiency. This is a circuit that we're going to use. This is a FET which is acting like a switch. We want to control the duty cycle which is the ratio of the length of time that the switch is closed to the length of time that it's open. When the switch is closed, current flows through the inductor and through the LEDs. We also want current to flow when the switch is open, therefore we need to add a diode across here. When the switch is closed, current not only flows through the inductor, but some of it also gets stored. Therefore, when the switch is open, the stored energy flows through the LEDs and the diode. As we're switching an inductor in this circuit, we draw spikes of current from the supply. To smooth this out, we've added a capacitor in the input. We've added a capacitor on the output. This is optional, but allows you to use it in discontinuous mode. For more information on this, please look at our chip kick video. This is the basis for our switching LED driver. It's a lot more complex than the linear one, but it's much more efficient with a wide range of input voltages. Choosing an LED driver can be a daunting task. There are many manufacturers who each make a variety of products to choose from. A good place to start looking is Texas Instruments and Linear Technology. When choosing an LED driver, we looked at whether it would work with a specified input voltage, supply the required output current for the LEDs, and whether the power would be dissipated in the package. As this is a tutorial and we want you to be able to build a circuit at home, we chose a driver that comes as a dip package. 
This means that it's easy for prototyping. It also comes in an EV SSOP package. The E means there's a thermal pad underneath, allowing you to dissipate the heat through the PCB. Now, we recommend not using a DFN package, as it's difficult to solder at home. Something which is often overlooked is whether a part comes with a good datasheet. Now, we've selected the Texas Instruments LM3409. As this was part of National Semiconductor's range, it comes with an excellent datasheet with a range of good worked examples. Capacitors are one of the harder components to select. There are three main ones, aluminium electrolytic, tantalum, and ceramic. Aluminium electrolytic capacitors have a large capacitance relative to their size. They have a low tolerance, therefore you may want to use a larger value than calculated. They also have a high ESR. This means that when used in a circuit with large ripple currents, they will heat up. This can be reduced by using them with ceramic capacitors in parallel. Tantalum capacitors have a larger capacitance relative to their size. They have a higher tolerance compared to electrolytic capacitors. They have a low ESR, but are not over voltage tolerant. Therefore, you should use a capacitor with a voltage rating higher than calculated. Ceramic capacitors have a lower capacitance. These are the main dielectrics to choose from. They have decreasing tolerance in the order they are listed here. Also, for a given capacitance, they decrease in size. For X5R and Y5V, the capacitance change with the applied voltage. Now, we'd recommend using X7R for switch mode power supplies. The next part in this tutorial will be up soon. If you like this video, we'd appreciate a thumbs up, and any comments you have are always welcome. Thank you.